Hello, my name is Jason Murray and I'm an architecture consulting engineer here at Cisco. In this video, I will walk through the initial setup of the C-Series server. That will include the configuration of the Cisco Integrated Management Controller, or CIMC, to configuring a RAID and finally putting an OS on it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is hook up a monitor and keyboard up to the server. You can do that by using the ports in the back of the server or using the KVM dongle like the one seen here. Since this is only temporary, I suggest using the KVM dongle with a crash cart because once the CIMC is configured, you'll be able to view the console by using the remote KVM. Once you see the Cisco logo, you'll want to quickly press the FA key to get into the CIMC config. Now that you're in the CIMC config utility, you'll want to change the IP address to match the configuration of what you have at your location. You can see there are a few things here that can be configured on the CIMC. The one that's most important is the IP address. By default, DHCP is configured. In most cases, you'll want to change this to a static so it doesn't change on you. Once this is set, save the config with F10. Then you'll need to plug in an Ethernet cable attached to your network to your management interface in the back of your C-Series. And if everything has been configured correctly, you'll be able to reach the CIMC from a web browser on your workstation on your network. Now I'm connected to the CIMC via web browser. To log in, use the default username of admin and the default password of password. Okay, now I'm logged in. Now if this is the first time you've been in the CIMC, take a moment and look around and see the information it provides and the options that you can configure. For now, what I'm gonna do is launch the KVM console and then power up my server to configure the RAID. The boot up process can take a minute or more, so I'm gonna skip forward quickly to get through it. Once you see the Cisco logo come up, you'll need to press the escape key. It's best to press it a few times just to make sure you catch it. If you see this screen, then you know the escape key was recognized. When you see the LSI Mega Raid come on the screen, press the Control and H keys together to enter the Web BIOS interface. Now we're in the RAID configuration. I'll click start to get into it. Keep note that the KVM console mouse may be a little slow to catch up to your mouse. Just be aware where the KVM mouse pointer is located before making a selection. As you can see in this particular server, I have five 300 gigabyte hard drives installed that are unconfigured. To start configuring the RAID on these, I'm going to use the configuration wizard. You're given three choices now. Since this is a brand new setup, I'm going to choose New Configuration and then click Next. This next screen is just telling you that you're about to clear the configuration. Since there's no configuration anyway and that's what I want to do, I'll click Yes. On the next screen, you're given two choices, either Manual Configuration or Automatic. If you choose Manual Configuration, you can set the drives up the way you want by selecting a drive and adding it to the array. For this particular setup, however, I'm going to choose Automatic Configuration. Under Redundancy, you have two options, Redundancy when possible or no redundancy. For this setup, I'm going to choose Redundancy when possible. Now the next screen shows me for this Automatic Configuration, it set up all five drives in one array and configure them as a RAID 6. Now this is okay for my installation, so what I'll do is I'll click Accept to save the changes. I'll click yes on this because I really do want to save the configuration. And it's confirming once again that I want to initialize this RAID. I'll click yes. Now I'll select my only RAID array and then set it as my boot drive. And then I'll click go. Next I'll go to the home screen by clicking the home button. At the home screen I can see the arrays I've set up and its status. Now that I have the RAID set up and it's complete, the next thing I'll do is exit from the utility. I'll choose yes to exit the application. And then to reboot the system, I'll choose the macros menu and choose control alt delete to reboot. Now the server is rebooting. Again, the boot up process will take a few minutes, so what I'll do is I'll move the video a little bit forward. Alright, so the server is now ready to install an OS on it. 
You can either put a CD or DVD in the local server drive and boot from it, or you can use the virtual media feature on the KVM console and boot from an ISO or a CD DVD located on your workstation. What I'm going to do is use an ISO located on my computer. But before I do that, I have to enable virtual media because by default it is not enabled. To enable it, go to the server tab in CIMC and choose remote presence, then virtual media tab and check enabled. Then save your changes. Now we'll bring back up the KVM console and add the ISO by going to tools, launch virtual media, then click add image. Find your image where it's located. In my case, it's on the Z drive. Highlight the ISO. Then click open. To map it, check the map checkbox next to the ISO. You'll need to keep this box open until the installation is complete. If it's closed, it removes the mapping. Now we can just hit any key now to boot off my ISO. And as you can see, it is now booted from the ISO that was mapped. And now I can continue to install, in this case ESXi, on my server. You would use the same process to install any other OS. And that's it. That's all there is to setting up your C-Series server to get an OS on it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and always, thanks for choosing Cisco.